Hello everybody and welcome to another Amulet video. I am right now in the process of trying to write a cyborg guide for Amulet Titan. So because of that, I want to make sure that I have a solid, uh, just a rock solid list to, to go off of. Of course, you know, changes and switches happening here and there, but um, I, I want to at least have like a, a stock list that I can base my, my cyborg guide off of. And this looks uh, like something very close to what you see on the screen. Uh, so we're gonna be playing um, just Micasynth Gardens, like this card has revolutionized uh, the... I mean, I guess it does, uh, that hasn't really revolutionized the deck, but it has made it a lot more robust and a lot cleaner. So um, I, I like the addition of the four Micasynth Gardens. I have tried a couple of different approaches so far. There was an approach without Dryad. I think the Dryad is like a little bit too powerful. So having access to it, it seems... Uh, I don't know if necessary is the word I'm looking for, but but uh, preferable is, is a word I would be more comfortable with using. And uh, I'm, I kind of don't want to go too all in on the Dryad uh, Axis, though. Uh, that's why we only see a single to Invalicud, which obviously can, can combo with the Vesuva to have like a redundant copy. But we only have the single to Invalicud to, to do our Dryad thing. Or Dryad thing. Uh, the thing is that this doesn't happen as often as it did with previous amulet lists because now we not only have a Ursa Saga which is destroying itself and bringing us further away from actually, you know, activating Dryad for having enough lands to activate Dryad, but also Micah's in Gardens destroys itself or like it turns itself into, into an artifact whenever it copies an amulet which puts you down the land once again. And also this deck list is playing a full 11 bounce lands, which make it even less likely that you're going to be triggering Dryad. So we're really using Dryad as sort of a more of a good card rather than, you know, more of a combo piece like we have in the past. Uh, but we still obviously want to have access to, to, to the, dry, the effect that the Dryad offers. I would honestly consider doing something like playing four Asusas and only three Dryads. I think that that's a very, very legitimate way to go about it. Uh, but we're going to go with four Dryads, three Asusa in this uh, specific list. I also have liked having access to the main deck Pact of Negation. And obviously, in order to accommodate, we are, you know, we're playing a single Tom Breeding Pool and a Misty Rainforest to kind of go fetch it if we need it. Uh, the Mike's and Gardens also gives us the blue mana that we need for both Pack of Negation and Swan Song in the sideboard. So we actually have like a pretty reasonable amount of blue sources, which is very nice, particularly because Swan Song uh, can be a very powerful tool against a variety of decks in the current format, namely stuff like Living In, stuff like Creativity. Uh, those decks, uh, you know, we, we kind of struggle against them in, in certain scenarios and having access to a one mana or I guess two mana if you're using Mike's in Gardens to filter um, one mana answer to, 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 to their namesake card can be very very impactful. We also have some Dismembers, Force, Endurance, Tile Striker and like the weird though card here out of all of these ones in the sideboard is two copies of Beast Within and the main reason for this are is basically an Elish Norn, right? Uh, the card Elish Norn, nobody really expected it, but it's kind of seeing a lot of play in Modern, and it's a card that we kind of cannot beat. <laughs> so, uh, because we can't answer it with cards like this member, we are forced into trying things uh, a little bit outside of the ordinary. And Beast Within is one of the few answers that we have access to the card in green. Uh, we could also play do something like playing Oblivion Stone. That's something that Mistaken has been having success with. Uh, but I think Oblivion Stone feels a little bit clunky. I have not tried it just yet. I'm going to. Uh, but again, like I, it feels a little bit clunky and a little bit um, too... How am I going to say? Like a little bit too slow, right? Like you would play your own stone, then your opponent would lay line binding it. So like you can realistically only play it and have it do its thing if you have eight mana in play already, which seems a little bit clunky. So because of that, I'm going to go with Beast Within instead. We also have Engineer Explosives, Boss Seiju, and Bojuga Bog to round out the sideboard. This is the decklist that we're going to be trying out here. Uh, we're going to be playing a Modern League on Magic Online. So if you're enjoying the content, make sure you hit that like and subscribe button. And if you are really enjoying it and you would like to support my content, you can do so in a variety of different ways. The cheap and, you know, 
a basically free way of supporting my content by whenever you go to DCG player and mana traders, sponsors of the stream, whenever you go to their sites and use their services, using the links that you see in the description of the video down below, you will be supporting my content for free and no extra cost to you. In the description, you will also find a 10% discount on mana traders for your first uh, two months. And if you'd like to support my content directly, you can do so by joining the Patreon. You can also make direct donations uh, with any donation of $30 or more. I will play in a deck list of your choosing through a modern league. Like we had the, the rats deck happening as the latest donut list, which was a lot of fun. And if you are interested in coaching, that's also a service that I offer. You can find all of the information in the description of the video down below. Thanks for watching and I'll see you for round number one. Okay, round number one. Uh, this hand is... I guess reasonable, not insane or anything, but reasonable. So we're looking for a bounce land. We're looking for a bounce land. We're going to cavern on giant, actually. And the reason to cavern on giant is that if we're going to be doing gracer things, we're going to be casting the gracer off of the Gruel turf. And if we are indeed playing against a counter spell deck, then we'd rather have our primeval titan um, be uncounterable than our gracer. Uh, okay, well, uh, I guess this is, I guess this is Hammer, so I think I play Toleria West and say go. If I find, if I find another Gracer or an Asusa, I can, I guess there's no, there's no reason for me to not play the Gracer now that I think about it. I guess drawing a second amulet, that would be the reason to not play the Gracer. Sigar the Sade. Okay, so we are indeed playing against Hammer. We're going to take a, a little bonk to the face over here. Um, we have Boseju. Okay, it's not great. Uh, so here's the Gruel Turf. And we're going to have to... We're going to have to dodge here. We're going to have to dodge my opponent having... We're going to have to dodge my opponent having a removal spell or a Shadow Spear. I guess we don't lose to shadow we actually do exactly lose to shadow sphere that's right because giver is a so that's 11 12 minus 3 i will block you locked all right that's good obviously pretty good for us uh nettle cyst okay i imagine they're just gonna make a make it so we would be i guess we're not actually just dead here so let's play let's play our land and our Play is basically forced. We have to we have to get Boseju. We do get to attack, which is nice. So we do get to go Boris Garrison Slayer Stronghold. We do get to haste our Primeval Titan, and obviously that's that's pretty nice. Uh, but I think our our play is basically forced. We have to go get Bounce Land and Boseju. So let's get Growth Chamber, Poseidu, and we're gonna bounce. We're gonna bounce the Poseidu. Opponent takes eight, and we can potentially present lethal next turn if we don't die. So we just have to figure out a way to stabilize here. We don't actually lose to a hammer. We lose to two hammers, but we don't lose to a single hammer, which is nice. We may actually we may actually win this game. We may actually win this game. Ink Moth Nexus, okay. Is this just so they have Metalcraft? Okay. Huh. I wonder if I should have just killed an Elsie. No, I was dead. I was dead to second. So I'm dead to second Colossus here, but I was dead to second Colossus regardless. So if they have another Colossus Hammer in hand, we're, we're dead. But there's nothing we could have done about it. Or like Blacksmith skill, I guess, right? That also kills us. Okay. Yeah, so any of those uh, would have would have actually killed us. There, there was nothing we can realistically do. And there was also nothing that we could have done like if they had like another skill because uh, they could have just moved things around. So, all right, uh, Force of Vigor comes in, Engineer Explosives, Boseju number three, and I guess Beast Within? Ugh, Beast Within sounds really bad. I don't want Pact of Negation. I don't want Cultivator Colossus. I don't want Cavern of Souls, and this looks pretty good to me. Yeah, this looks strong. Giver kind of makes me want to consider this member, but I 
I mean, this card is so hit or miss versus versus this deck that I don't really think I want to, particularly when I'm on the play, right? We're on the play. Interesting, a double saga draw. Okay, I'm gonna keep this. So we can go turn one Gracer into Saga, turn two, play Saga, potentially play a Dryad. I guess we'll see how that goes. We can also make Constructs, but I don't think that has too much value versus versus Hammer specifically. As per Sentinel, that does not do anything. Bunch of Arnithopters. <laughs> Engineered Explosives. Okay, so... Just gonna play out a Dryad, and we missed our land drop, which is pretty unfortunate, but it's how it goes sometimes. Opponent plays Giver, that's fine. And their own Saga, that's also fine. Playing out the Hammer, okay. Percy Bigger, sure. So, I think here I'm just gonna make a Construct. No, actually what I should do is I should, I should float a mana and I should crack map right now for a bounce land. Let's get growth chamber. And then on upkeep, we are going to force hammer and saga. And we're gonna pay for uh, Esper Sentinel. They can have blacksmith, blacksmith skill, but I can only save one of these, so it's fine. And I can get mana tithe here, but that's fine. If my opponent's running mana tithe, they deserve it. And now we are good to go. Now we just, next turn, we have, uh, we find our amulet, we play two land drops because we pl we smartly play our dryad a couple of turns ago. Ooh, that's brutal. Oh, they actually can't crack it. Okay, cool, we don't care. <laughs> Sounds good. Is my opponent gonna swing for one? All right, that's tough. Protection from green, you got it, champ. You got it, champ. Okay, so yeah, we're just gonna go for it here. Uh, float a green, here's my amulet, here's a land, which my opponent knows about, here is another land. Opponent's gonna get to draw a card, but I think that's fine. You say no. Here's prime time, float some mana, play Primeval Titan, Borders Garrison, Slayer Stronghold. If opponent has path, uh, that means that we can still pay for Pact, so that's nice. Bounce here, and go to combat, swing. My opponent actually cannot kill the Dryad, which is funny. Um, so let's get, I think I'm getting Boseju Bounce Land here. Could just get Gardens, Boseju. If I get Boseju Bounce Land, I can bounce the Borders Garrison and I can play Explosives for one, which guarantees that I don't die. That sounds reasonable to me. So let's go Growth Chamber, Boseju. And this is nice because we have we have all of the threats of activation, but we don't need to do anything. So, Engineer Explosives. Uh, actually, do I just crack this? No, they, they, they don't have enough to actually warrant me cracking this Engineer Explosives. So we just chill here. We're gonna be good, we're gonna be good to pay for Pact. So that's cool. String Leaf Drum, that's... Even more stuff that dies to my engineered explosives. And their hand is just non-functional. They are insanely dead. Pay for my pact. Play a land. I might as well play another. <clears throat> I have them dead on board, so I'm just gonna pay for, for the Sentinel here. Their hand was not very strong. Yeah, all right, they concede. And we go to game number three. Any changes? Not really. This looks good. This looks good. I think we are pretty heavily favored in this matchup. Uh, I mean, obviously it's Hammer, right? Like the deck is so strong because it has some like random draws that are just kind of unbeatable. Like that's the strength of the deck. So obviously you can sometimes get run over, particularly if you keep medium hands. Uh, like this one. <laughs> uh, they showed me Might. Yeah, I'm gonna ship this. We can do better than that. Uh, this is better. Keep this, bottom forest. So we already have a Titan and we have a triple amulet. So we're drawing towards literally any way to... Okay, so we we may just get run over, but the kind of hand that I was talking about a second ago. But we get to go amulet into 
Saga into Amulet, then potentially get another Saga, Pure Steel Paladin. Okay, so that's no hammer. That's good for me. Primeval Titan. Well, don't mind if I do. Uh, Vesuva, copy my Saga, and you have to kill me right now, opponent. Otherwise, you are very, very dead. Show me. Show me lethal. Double hammer right now. That doesn't do it. That is not it. That is not it. But do, they do get the redraw. They do get the redraw. Stoneforge doesn't do it now. Needs to be the natural hammer. Land. All right. What do you got? Not good enough. Not good enough. Okay. I'm a little bigger. Here's a land. Now the question is... Do I go for it or do I play our own path to exile? That is the question. Do we play our own path to exile? Because I can get pretty blown out here if I don't. What I can go what I can do is I can just go Boseju Bounce Land. If I go Boseju Bounce Land, I guess I would need to use it right now because I need to if I, I would like to transmute these to Larry West right now as well. So Probably doesn't do it. Yeah, I think I'm just gonna go for it. I think we I think we're supposed to go for it here. Also, it it means that my opponent can't cycle into something else, right? We have no packs to pay for, which is very nice. Haste prime time. Uh we could Nah, this is fine. Do that. Go to combat. Swing. And we don't have lethal because my opponent has a blocker. So I think we actually get Boseju Bounce Land. So we're not going to actually attempt to lethal because we can't. So we can't. So now we bounce the Boseju and we should be good. When it takes 10. Pass it back. I imagine they're going to crack Canopy and step. They are. Okay. Esper Sentinel doesn't do anything at all. Marsh Flats. And now I guess they can attack for one. All right. I'll take one. You have got me. Perfect. All right. So oh, that's a lot. <laughs> that's a lot. Um, here's another amulet. And here is a primeval titan that we're going to transmute for. I guess, is it better to just go for a dryad here? Summoner's packed. Packed. I think we're just going to go for a dryad here. Uh, actually, no, we get blown out by what's his name. So I'm going to, I'm going to actually play a second primeval titan before I do anything else. Say yes. Toleria West and any bounce land. So I'm gonna have to go find Dryad, float blue, float blue, float blue, more mana, tap, bounce, transmute, another summon respect, packed for Dryad, play Dryad, Play Stronghold, Haste, Prime Time, say okay, move to combat, boom boom. Now we're gonna get some Valakuts in play. Valakut, and I guess it does. Bonin just concedes. Alright, awesome. Wanna know? Here we are for round number two. And we have Saga, Gardens, Dryad. Yeah, this is, this looks good. So we're gonna go turn one Saga. Turn two gardens, turn three, this will pop off. We're gonna be able to have two amulets in play, and then we're gonna be able to play Dryad, and we're gonna be one mana short of casting Titan. But if we find Asusa, we find Gracer, if we find another Dryad, any of those will actually give us. What it moves to five? Polluted Delta. Okay. Well, we drew an amulet. Seems good. Uh, do we want to play around Spell Pierce or do we want to play around Discord Spell? I think I'd rather play around Discord Spell. So we're going to go with Amulet. This also is nice because even if they have like a Discord Spell or something, we can still copy Amulet without maybe getting scammed here. It's a Dothy. So we're definitely getting scammed. Do I want to pivot? Huh. Well, that's very interesting. So... Well, now we have some options, because what I can do is I can go Growth Chamber, Bounce Saga. I guess I can just, yeah, I can just go Growth Chamber, Bounce, Growth Chamber, Replay Growth Chamber, Bounce Saga, and I can hold up Boseju. 
I think I'm gonna do that so I can play around. And I'm only doing this because I can... Um, th this allows me to actually play around Blood Moon. And because we naturally drew the amulet, we can still beat... Um, we, we, we can still Primeval Titan next turn. Yes, we can, because we drew the second Dryad. So what we're going to do is we're going to play Gardens, we're going to copy Amulet, then we're going to play a second Growth Chamber, we're going to play Dryad off of 5 mana, 2 floating, play another Growth Chamber, that's Titan mana. Yeah, so we, we still have... Uh, this allows me to like be, actually ble beat Blood Moon here. Terminate my Dryad. Okay, could have been worse. Also, that means no Blood Moon, which I'm stoked about. All right, so that is a Saga. Play Dryad. We're going to... Hmm. Yeah, I guess I'm going to continue playing around. I'm going to continue playing around Blood Moon. Like, I can, I can beat Blood Moon, right? Like, so that being the case, I think I should try to play around it. And now next turn we have Titan mana, regardless of if my opponent kills it right or not. So the only thing we gotta dodge is either Grief or Thoughtseize. We probably lose unless we top deck exactly Blood Moon. And then we top deck exactly another Titan, I mean. So they fetch Knight's Whisper. I guess that we can still win. We're gonna have double amulet, this fetches for Expedition Map, Expedition Map fetches Toleria West. And then we go from there. So we can actually still win here. Take three. And no other place. Uh, so no other place means that we just win here. That's a, actually a pretty bad draw. Not the worst possible draw, but pretty bad. Copy Amulet. Play Growth Chamber. Do the thing. So for black mana, there's no one mana answer that my opponent can have to these. Primeval Titan, even if they were playing something like Unholy Heat, it would not be online. We can actually double prime time though. So I might as well go for double prime time. So let's get T West and Growth Chamber. Bounce T West. Play Garrison. Float some mana. And these should very lethal. I'm gonna respect for another prime time. Mana floating, go Vesuva and Stronghold. Now we haste both Titans. Even if my opponent's playing something stupid like Slaughter Pact, we still beat it. Okay, great. So we are playing against Scam. We want to cut Cultivator, bring in Boseju, bring in Trackers and Endurance, and Beast Within and Dismember. So these are the cards I'm interested in. Pact of Negation is coming out. At least I want to cut two or three Sagas and one Gardens. And we can cut one Asusa, Expedition Map, an Amulet. I guess I'm only going to be bringing in one Beast Within. I don't think I want to. What do we got here? Turn one Gracer. Yeah, this look, set looks pretty strong. So we can go turn one Gracer into Saga, which stops a potential Monkey draw. It allows me to pivot into uh, playing Bounce Lands and returning my Saga if I want to. Another Bounce Land. Is that better or worse? So another Bounce Land actually allows me to guarantee three mana on turn two. So I think I'm going to go for that as opposed to Saga. Because if I go for Saga, then I'm not going to be able to, to cast any of my three drops on turn two. And I think I'd rather prioritize that. One goes Black Light Cliffs. Really want to dodge Thoughtseize here. That's Dothy. Dothy is very scary in this matchup. Like I'm, I'm always very scared of Dothy. The combination of Dothy plus Thoughtseize when you have a Primeval Titan in hand is, as you may expect, pretty bad for us. Gracie, Gracer doing some serious work there. Ha! Huh. That's interesting. So I can shock and play Hold Up Beast Within. That allows me to play around the Moon Effect, and it allows me to play around the Dothy, but it means that I'm gonna fall behind with my land drops. Yeah, I think I'm, I'm not gonna risk that. I think I'm just gonna play a Dryad here and just have a 2-4 in play. 
Um, and I could play Azusa instead to guarantee Titan mana next turn, but I think this is I think this is better. Just like a 2-4 is harder to remove and it blocks monkey very nicely. So I'm forcing my opponent to have a land. This is also worse if they indeed have um, a Blood Moon, but I think you know, I think Blood Moon just beats me almost regardless. And I think that's what my opponent has here. Yeah. Okay, so if we draw basic forest, we win the game. So we have three draws that win us the game. And kind of nothing else really matters. <laughs> it's, it's, it's those three draws and nothing else matters. Basic forest? No. Uh, I think... I play it out anyway, I think. And the reason for doing that is... Uh, and I'm, I'm not going to be racing this Dothy, so I'm just not going to attack... I don't want to get hit by monkey. Like if my opponent has a bolt on the gracer, then like the two points of damage that I can deal with the dry just don't matter. Like we either answer the blood moon or we're gonna lose. So uh, I, I don't think it's worth attacking there. Uh, but like the reason to play the player was there, it's because oh interesting chalice, good to know about that one. Uh, it's because if I find um, a basic forest, I can just be within this anyway, and I'd rather have a land, have my land and be untapped. Maybe, maybe I should still hold it, because if I find the forest and I get these thoughts seized, it may be better. Um, Alright, so it's it's a, it's a matter of do we find the green source before my opponent kills me with this Dothy Void Walker. It's good that they, cannot, they can't cast Grief, and they can't cast any more Dothys, because they have only a single black mana, so that's nice. So, holy monkey at bay, definitely definitely coming in handy. Basic first, Boseju. I think I'm actually playing out the Boseju because if I do find if I do find a basic forest next turn, we can go basic forest, blow up blood moon, then play second land Ursa Saga and cast Titan on the same turn. So, because of that, it's correct for me to play out this Boseju. If they have Fury here, we're probably going to lose. Because now, even if I blow up the Blood Moon, I just don't have time. No, I guess I'm, I'm still fine. I'm still fine. I can just cast the, the Azusa. I'm going to get beaten down by the 3-3, three, three, however. So maybe maybe I don't have the time. But this jumps here. We take 3. Basic? Not it. All right. So now we just don't have the time to... Moving on to the next game... Uh, we just saw just a classic, <laughs> just a classic match. I was like, Saga a lot better on the play because we get the amulet faster than my opponent gets the Blood Moon. Uh, but this seems decent to me. This seems decent. I could see cutting potentially another Saga or maybe a Cavern of Souls for another beast with him. But, okay. Huh, interesting hand. My opponent showed me Chalice. This hand beats Blood Moon, which is nice. Yeah, I'm going to keep this. It also doesn't care too much about Dothy, which is nice. The Dothy thoughts his combo doesn't really do it. So play out Boseju. Play Sanctuary. Now we are just going to hold this Boseju for the rest of the game. Can't get Blood Moon. Could technically pack for Dryad if I wanted to. Doesn't seem worth it. Naturally drawing a Dryad would be fantastic. Ursa Saga. Yeah, okay. Let's play that out. We are running a risk by playing that out. If my opponent goes land, land, blood moon. That's bad for me, but... Takenuma. Dolphy Void Walker. Ugh, that's a really bad draw. Extremely poor draw right, that, right there. Extremely, extremely bad draw. I would have loved to find, like, a green source or something like that. Alright, let's see that blood moon. We're gonna continue playing, at least, which is nice. If my opponent does indeed blood moon me, we just get to Poseidon them and we, we keep on playing. So it's not the absolute worst. There it is. Land fetch. Basic forest. Oh, surprise. Oh, come on. <laughs> oh, come on, man. Really? Ugh. All right. Well, we got a 1-1 one, one for our troubles, at least. That's frustrating. Um... So now we have to draw this member, and that's kind of the only card that matters now. Man, I, I hate this matchup so much. <laughs> I, I despise this matchup. 
Like it, it just doesn't matter what our what our hand is, right? <laughs> it just it literally does not matter how our game plays out. Like the only thing that matters is my opponent's hand. No agency whatsoever. Thoughtsies. Go nuts. So I guess my out now is for my opponent to take the summoners back here and then like cast it off of the Dothi. <laughs> I mean technically I can find a <laughs> Jesus. Uh, I can technically find a Blood Moon here, I guess. Um, uh, sorry, a Dismember. And then we may be in okay shape. Now we need to find this member soon-ish. Because, like, it, it's going to cost me four life, right? And, like, this thing is still blocking me and I can't block it. Fury. Blow up my board. Okay. <clears throat> well, the good thing is that they didn't use Fury to save their Magus, right? They don't use like the Undying thing to save the Magus. They're using it to play the Fury. So actually, um, I kind of think that's a mistake on their part. Like the only thing that matters here is this Magus, right? Like I'm losing to this. So if they do have the answer to the Magus, they should probably just... Although I guess I can float the mana while the Magus is in the graveyard. So it's probably just fine for me. Yeah. All right. I mean, it doesn't, doesn't really matter too much here. This member? No. All right, we lose. Uh, that was a very unexciting match. <laughs> Let's go to the next one. <laughs> All right. Uh, this hand looks like a trap. Like, we can go turn one Boseju and play Gracer Saga. But the problem with that is that we just don't have a payoff. So, uh, this hand is better. Much better, actually. Uh... Yeah, I'm going to keep it. I'm going to bottom the Gracer. We may be playing against the Monkey deck, and then I'm going to be sad I bottom the Gracer, but... Is this another scam? Well, there it goes. Uh, as I said earlier, like, this matchup is really bad, and it, it just doesn't matter. Like, whatever we do just does not matter at all. Like, the only thing that matters is my opponent's draw, and it seems like they have a good draw. So we're just probably going to lose this game without too much to do about it. Feign death. And yeah, there you go. Honestly, like, this is the reason to not play Amulet. And this is the reason why, like, everybody's losing their minds over Amulet, like, being so strong with Micah's in Gardens or whatever. It's just, like, it doesn't matter. Like, it, it, it really does not. As long as this is one of the Tier one's decks, uh, one of the Tier 1 decks in the format, it doesn't matter how good Amulet gets, it's still never going to be Tier 1 because it cannot beat this scum deck. There's no way in which you can build Amulet, you know, of, your, of course, you can just, like, not play amulets, not play sagas, and just, like, play a bunch of, like, tireless truckers and, like, ramp spells or whatever. But at that point, you're not really playing amulet anymore, right? <laughs> you're just you're just playing a mono green ramp deck. Uh, but if you want to be playing amulet, there's no way you can build a deck that actually beats the scam deck So uh, in, in a reliable way. So uh, as long as this remains one of the tier 1 decks, you, you can rest assured that amulet is not going to take over the form. All right. My opponent did their thing, and they're just, like, beating me down. Uh, does this even do anything? I don't think so, so I guess I'm not even going to float mana here. Just going to go find my amulet. I guess I'm going to play Valakut and say go. So, can I race, is the question. With, uh, well, now I can't. Well, actually, does, does that change the clock? Well, that, the second bolt does change the clock. So now, do I have any draws? Now that my opponent double bolted my face. We go down to two, we go down to one, and I can pack for a Susa. So if I draw a bounce line, we still don't have enough. Oh, yeah, we're, we're, we're okay. Second amulet, doesn't do it. I don't think anything does it. Oh, yes. Upkeep, call against command you. Oof. Just look at that. Um, game two, dismember, beast within, trackers, endurance, we'll sage you, cut that, cut one of those, cut that and that, and two sagas, one garden. I think this side wouldn't look okay to me. Honestly, there's an argument, let's actually try this. There's an argument for expedition map over the amulet. So let's actually try this. Um, with Expedition Map being, uh, you know, a basic forest, a bad basic forest or a bad Boseju, but like that's probably better than 
you know, like a one mana dark steel relic. <laughs> All right, so this hand has a three drop and hits its land drops, so I guess I'll keep it. I'm gonna lead on Saga because it gives me the option if I want to pursue Saga, I can do that. If my opponent goes turn one monkey, I'm probably gonna just play a bounce land and just do something else. Uh, but this, this hand seems somewhat reasonable. This hand can beat some scam hands. But if my opponent goes turn one monkey, I'm gonna not be in good chance. That's a black source. We're gonna get scammed. Okay. Sounds fun. Isn't this fun? Are you having a good time, YouTuber, YouTube watcher? And they say magic is a skill game. <laughs> can you believe those idiots? <laughs> skill game this? Uh, yeah, sure. <laughs> yeah, sure. It really is. Or at least that's like the best case scenario because it's the one that gives me the most time to actually recoup. So we at least we got that going. Unclear how much that will actually matter, but this being a 3 2 is better for us than board 3, obviously. All right, so both title strikers are gone. My opponent has a 3 2 menace. Okay, which we can dismember. It's not bad. I'm gonna do that right now before my opponent finds uh, another of those like stupid, you know, undying death, whatever effects. So now I stopped my opponent's clock at least. So that's something good for us. Blood Crypt tapped. That's good. Explosives for one. You got it, champ. Sure. I think I am going to get my amulet and just put the dryad in play. Like, if my opponent wants to spend their entire turn... If they want to spend their entire turn just, like, blowing the amulet up, I think that's good for me. Obviously, they can just have a... They can just have a Blood Moon and none of these matters, but... I can only beat so much. I can only beat so much. All right, that's good for me. That is good for me. Also, no land. No land's also good for me. So next turn I'm gonna be able to oh I could have actually messed this up here. I could have I could have deal I could have dealt two more points of damage. Um yeah, I forgot to like float red mana from this to attack with Dread. I think I'm actually gonna attack here in this scenario because miss two points and just being able to block a dashed monkey. But if my opponent is dashing a monkey here, that's that's just actively good for me. So of course they have the thoughtsies. Okay. Um well, let's go activate here, red, white, man, the, the two points of damage that I missed may actually matter, that's rough, and replay this, and for four, they just have nothing, okay, that's a basic forest, there, there's no reason for me to hold on to, to the, um, to the lands, because my trackers are gone, I guess Valakut would be the only reason to do that, but, we already have uh, lethal with Valakut, assuming my Dryad survives. Okay, I'm gonna see a Bloodman here. Like, what's basic mount? Fatal push. Lame. Lame. So, if we find another Dryad, we can actually haste. Even if we find a Susa or Bracer, we can haste. Uh, transmute for Pact. We have exactly enough, so I guess I have to fetch for. Uh, Reading pool here, transmute for summoner's pact, pact or primeval titan, and I'm just gonna get two basic forests here that I don't die to blood moon off the top or magus or whatever. All right, terminate. See some pyromancer. That's not gonna be good enough. Actually, maybe it is. I mean, they they have to chomp with everything and they go to one. Like the two the two points of damage that I missed may actually matter. Uh, let's actually pay properly. We want to pay... Oh, no, yeah. Because th the life doesn't matter, so we actually want to pay using the black mana so that we can transmute if we find another T-West. Dryad. Uh, yeah, that's very lethal. That's extremely lethal. Red, white. Face there. For good measure. Move to combat. Face. Get Valakut. And the card at random. Face. Face. Game number three. Uh, I think this setup looks good to me. I think this setup looks good, looks good for me. Um, 
good to know that my opponent's playing engineered explosives because that card is really bad against us. So, excellent. Opponent giving opponent is giving us a chance. I don't know what they cut to make room for that engineered explosives, but whatever that is is better than the engineered explosives. Uh, this scam looks good. I don't know if it's gonna matter because if they do have this scam, they just can take both of my things and I just roll over and die. But if they don't have scam, this hand is reasonable. Point them to six. Let's see if they have it. Looks like they do. Yep, there goes the gracer. Very fun. <laughs> Uh, they, they had the scam all three games. Good stuff. Good stuff. Good stuff. Um, Summoner's Pact. I think I'm going to go for Saga. I don't think I have any other realistic way of winning the game than my opponent just doing nothing for the remainder of the game. And that includes, obviously, just not having access to Bloodman. So Thoughts is, I imagine, is going to take the Primeval Titan. Now... If we draw a Sousa or another Gracer, we may actually have a shot. Preferably a Sousa. I guess a Dryad would also be a pretty good draw. That is a basic forest. I'm not going to play that out just yet. Let's just get my tap land out of the way. And I'm going to play the forest this coming turn. Explosives for one. Take four. Boseju. Huh. So if I get... If I get Amulet here, yeah, I think I'm just getting Amulet and just passing the turn back here. I'm still getting Amulet. There's an argument for getting, um, for backing for Azusa here. I think I'm doing that. I think I'm doing that. Because I I'm going to fall too far behind otherwise. Like, the only way that I can really keep up is if I, if I just get to do the thing here. And I just can actually get on the board. Uh, I could blow this up. I don't think I want to because my opponent is short on mana. And again, like, if my opponent wants to spend their entire turn, I'm paying for pack next turn regardless. And if they want to spend their entire, their entire turn cracking explosives, gives me a chance to draw into something else. On the plus side, looks like they don't have the extra land. So if I draw a Primeval Titan, we actually just win the game, which is nice. On the other hand, we are dead to Lightning. Pact or Prime Time? Play that. I'm definitely going to develop mana here and because play my lands. And yeah. Um, do I want to... Yeah, I think I actually want to develop my mana even further. Even though this is worse if I draw Tracker, I think that this is fine. But I don't want to draw my opponent into lands that can potentially cast a Blood Moon. We lose to Bolt. But if they don't answer my amulet, we're going to be able to kill them with Primeval Titan if we draw it. Prime time? Packed? Yeah. I guess that that is good enough. Summoner's Pact. Packed for Prime Time. Land number one. Land number two. Cast Primeval Titan. Say yes. Get Vesuva. Slayer Stronghold. Copy my own Boros Garrison, untap, bounce Boros, replay Boros, and we should be swinging for 16. Haste prime time, go to combat, attack. And as I was saying earlier, uh, this, uh, like this matchup, my draw doesn't matter. The only thing that matters is my opponent's, and my opponent's draw was just non-functional here. So we just we just won because my opponent just didn't do anything. Like they were not able to pressure us quickly enough. But this was this was not like skill on my part or anything like that. We just <laughs> the cards just lined up in such a way that we ended up winning. But like it wasn't because of us. It was because my opponent's draw just didn't do anything. See you next round. Okay, so we're playing against the Kahira deck. Uh, this hand may be okay. Yeah, I think this hand may be okay. So we get to go turn one Saga, turn two map, turn three do many things. I get a turn two garden, sorry. Gardens copy map and do many, many things. Uh, so they may have something like subtlety that may put a wrench on my plans. They could also have stuff like March, though that card has 
not really seen that much play lately. Leyline Binding would be a problem as well. Uh, but cards like Solitude actually don't matter as much as you'd think. Prismatic Ending. Okay, sounds good. Not too much. Ursa Saga. Play Garden. So you go. They get Kitria Triumph. And now Misty. So we're actually going to have a couple of ways to go about this. I think I'm probably supposed to just go all in and get God by Leyline Binding. It sucks, but I think it's it's the right thing to do. They had Broker's Charm? Jesus. Broker's Charm, dude. I did top the Ganabula, which is nice, but... But Broker's Charm, man. What the hell? Also, the, I no, this is fine. This is fine. I think my opponent has, has counter magic. I think they have counter magic, so it's better to do this. Dude, destroy target enchantment. Holy crap. Wait, why are you doing this now? Why didn't they do that there? <laughs> why didn't they just main phase the amulet? Opponent out there trying to give me a chance at winning this game. Why didn't they? I mean, whatever. <laughs> okay. Maybe they were just like trying to bait me into doing that. I mean, it seems kind of risky to do that. Can I draw land? Okay. So we're just gonna have to play it slow, I guess. So what we want to do now is hit land drops and hopefully find... Also my opponent missing land drops is good for me. Uh, but we kind of need to to just hit land drops here. Here is Anasusa. What's this? Resolve. Counterspell. Boohoo. Here's a land. Pass the turn. So now next turn we can transmit for a cavern and then we can set that up. So if they continue doing nothing, we may actually win here. <laughs> they get double amulet trigger. Value. Down to two cards in hand, so that's good for, for me. If I can naturally find a cavern, that would be great. That's not it. So I'm gonna filter here. Find Cavern of Souls. Boop. And I guess play Sun Home? Or do I play Rot Farm? Yeah, I want to play Sun Home. Pass the turn back. So next turn we're going to play an Uncounterable Titan, which is going to set up an Uncounterable Colossus. Endurance on my end step. Targeting themselves. Okay, so that probably means that they don't, they're not playing... Oh, I'm, I'm an idiot. Obviously they can't play Snapcaster Mage. <laughs> they literally cannot play Snapcaster Mage. Alright, so... Subtlety? Do we have Subtlety? Yay or nay? Because here is an uncountable primeval titan. What do you got? I got this. Hey, that result. Solitude in response. Okay. That's just bad timing. That's. They should have waited until I fetch, and then they do that. Uh, but like like this, you're just telling me, oh yeah, you should you should set up your next primeval titan. You should do that, which is obviously not necessarily what I want. Um. So we're gonna get another. Growth Chamber, I guess. And this cavern is going to go on Beast. Bouncing this. Pass the turn back. Actually, I should have bounced the Cavern on Giant. Because if my opponent has Field of Ruin or something weird like that, they can just put it on the Cavern on Beast. And that's going to be a world of hurt for me. Buying Kahira. Probably good news for me. Probably good news for me when they buy Kahira. Uh, so we probably do lose to Dress Down, however. Dress down would be very, very bad for us. Two, three, four, six, seven. Please don't dress down me, bro. Hey, all right. So now we should, we should play all of my lands. All of them. All of them. All of them. So we play a bunch of lands. Get some triggers. Rot farm. And, ha. Huh. What else do I balance here? I kind of want to bounce Poseidon. Unclear, but um, they may have Leyline Binding. They, they very likely do because of the Rafine's Tower and the Kidra Triumph. So they very likely have Binding. So I think I'm just going to pass the turn back here. We just pass the turn back so that we are not just playing the Simulate face up. Oh, really? 
Oh no, opponent, what are you doing? Do you want to give me more triggers? You, they literally know that I have a Seiju in hand. Why would they do that? Well, I mean, they, they were they were extremely dead anyway, so it's not really that it, like it matters, but but yeah. <laughs> um, okay, so this is going to be a fun turn. This is going to be a really fun turn. Okay, so here we go. Amulet. I would like to uh, copy my amulet. I would like to copy another amulet. But say you your ley line binding. <laughs> this, was, this was a risky proposition, opponent. <laughs> This was a risky proposition. Ooh, look at that value that they get, they're they getting. Getting so much mana. Not even floating. Ugh, boring. Boring. All right, so we stack our triggers and we, we buckle up because this is going to be, this is going to be some fireworks right here. This is going to be some fireworks. Bounce that. I guess I bounce that. Uh, some respect. Or dry it. Two, three. Float some green. This guy. Say yes. Copy there. That. Fuck it. That. Face. Oh. Alright, I messed this up. Not that it matters, but I messed it up. So all the triggers are gonna go out the Gahira <laughs> because I misclicked. <laughs> Whoops, uh, opponent concedes though. They see the writing on the wall. That was weird, but it worked out. Okay, so we are playing against a uh, control deck. So Tile Strucker is great. Uh, Cultivator is fine. Boseju is great. Uh, Swan Song is somewhat reasonable. I am not expecting Omnath, so I'm not going to bring in this member. If I do see Omnath, then these members are going to be coming up. Um, they can't have Elish Norn because they have Kahira. So without Elish Norn, I don't think I want Beast Within. So it's just going to be those. I do think I want to cut one Mycosin Gardens and I want to cut one Saga. Potentially, we can cut uh, the Double Strike Land. This is something that I used to do in control matchups. I'm not sure if this applies anymore, but I'm still gonna I'm still gonna go for it. Like we, we do have trackers and we have another ways to do things. And the last cut is going to be one gracer. Actually, let's cut two gracers instead of the sun home. And actually, I, I do like Asusa better than Gracer. Okay, opponent did not reveal. Okay, so they did not reveal Kahira, so I'm expecting Lesh Norn, so obviously the the thing, the um, what's his name are gonna come back. I do think this hand is fine though. Would like to find the blue source expedition map. That is kind of a blue source. Opponent fetches Rafine's Tower. Tap land. Okay. Here's a Boseju. Has the turn. Okay, so I think we just fetch for Cavern. Cavern on human. Cavern of souls. Like, they don't have a clean answer to Tracker anyway. So, Cavern on Human. Play Tracker. Pass the turn. We can Vesuva to copy my opponent's land if I want to hold up Swan Song, or we can Vesuva my own Cavern, but I think we can just reset my own Cavern, so I don't need to don't need to do that. One I'm missing land drops. It's good for me. All right, Boseju. I think I'm just going to Vesuva Spada's Headquarters and pass the turn back. Um, I'm not gonna attack because they have endurance in their deck. Maybe they side it out. They very likely side it out, but like, there's literally no reason for me to run into it. So, draw two. Okay. Interesting. They wouldn't do that main phase when they're missing land drops. Like, it's not like I can severely punish them. Chalice for one. That's fine. If we really need to use these swan songs, we get the chalice. So, all right. Now we get we do get to start to put on the pressure. Which is nice. It's not bad. It's not bad at all. Saga. Awkward that we don't have double blue. Really awkward that we don't have double blue. Yeah, I'm just gonna play out the Saga here. Trigger. And we could draw into a Sousa. So I guess it's technically correct for me to crack now. We would need to go to discard, however. It is also one more point of damage. I think it's worth doing. Valakut. Yeah, I think I'm packed him. I think we've just packed for Asusa. Cover on human. Play Rock Farm. Bounce Cavern. 
play Sanctuary. Take five. Um, if they do have Norn, that's kind of annoying. But this Trucker, I mean, we can just kind of ride this Trucker to victory if they do have Norn. Okay, so now we can't anymore. So they blew up a clue and they, with Force of Vigor and they blew up my Saga. So Norn here is a big deal. Supreme Verdict. That's fine. Doesn't actually matter too, too much. So, pay for Pact. Play Gardens, say go. And again, I may need to Swan Song something. Now I do have Pact of Negation, so I can actually answer Elish Norn here. Crack Clue for a basic forest. Cavern of Souls. I guess I'm gonna name Giant. It's the most likely type to matter. And I guess I'm gonna Bosage you so I don't have to go to this card. Sucks to give them a land, but this is unfortunately worth doing, I think, because the lands do actually ha a hold value in my hand because of both uh, my second copy of Tracker, my Dryads, and also my... Uh, what's his name? Broker's Charm. That's fine, you get to draw two. Cultivator Colossus would be a good draw. The Fairy Time Raveler. Well, I'm gonna pack that. It blanks two of my cards. So so here's a blue. Play like this. And blue. We can still hold up Swan Song on, on their next turn. We can just fetch for Breeding Pool. Hey, there we go. It's a big deal. Swan Song also counters uh, Dress Down, which is very nice. The problem now is Elish Norn is very likely G. So that part sucks. But everything else is nice. Also, can we haste? Probably. I guess I don't, I don't really have to go for haste, so I'm just gonna just set up my next Titan. Here's prime time. We still have a land drop here. Prime time resolves. Say so yes. We're gonna go T West Growth Chamber. Bounce. And I guess I'm gonna play out the Valak. Here we're holding up double Swan Song. If opponent's got uh, Solitude, kind of just fine. Endurance doesn't do anything. Why do they have Endurance in their deck? Just to pressure me? Like, is that really the best thing that they, the best option they have access to? It seems very mediocre. No Solitude. No Solitude. Okay, so now we're gonna have options. We have, opponent's got three cards in hand. So, I think we just swing first to force my opponent's hand. They just have nothing? They have literal nothing, huh? Okay. Um, kind of confusing. <laughs> but, alright. Um, they could technically, I guess, have another endurance and they double block. That seems fine to me. Okay, just a chump. All right, I'll take a chump. Um, they show me Verdict. I kind of do not want to overextend into Verdict. So I'm just going to transmute. I'm just gonna transmute for another Summoner's Pact. And I think I'm just chilling. Because I can beat Elish Norn. I could also just like pack for Dryad and just start shooting my opponent. I do have lethal if I go for Dryad. There's just no need to. There's just no need to. Let's assume that they draw Elish Norn. Like, we just protect, protect our prime time. Force of Vigor, my land. You got it, champ. Seems like my opponent over, overboard a little bit. Like, Force of Vigor is very good against Amulet right now, but not for this deck. Like, this, I'm, like Force of Vigor is fantastic in the mirror or like stuff like that, but if you're trying to play like a longer game, I don't think you want to have your hand filled up with random forces that don't actually pressure me or that don't answer, actually answer my you know, my board once the game gets to this spot. But, yeah. All right, three and one. Last round, what do we got here? Uh, we're on the play. Game one, uh, turn one, nothing. Turn two, ETB tap land. Turn three, turn four, Titan. Okay. If I were on the draw, I would be a little bit more skeptical about keeping this kind of hand, but like this hand beats a fair amount of the format. And if I draw any land at all, I get to like throw a roadblock in my opponent's way. Opponent keeps seven and we have a very unexciting first turn, but more to come, more to come, just 
just hanging there. Misty Rainforest Go. Okay, so we don't have too much information, but we did draw any land, so now we get to play our Gracer Boy, and we get to play my land. Good stuff, good stuff. So now we can play Dryad turn th turn two, uh, turn three, sorry, and then uh, Prime Time on turn four. We have all the mana that we need, which is exciting. Rogging Triumph into Flooded Strand. Interesting. Well, let's see if you have a counter spell. You don't, huh? Okay. Um, I really expected my opponent to have a counter spell. <laughs> uh, okay, so here's Stronghold. Here's Saga. Say go. I, I'm kind of surprised that they don't have it. I really expected them to have it. Um, okay, that's awkward. <laughs> Leyline binding. Sure, sure, that's fine. Stomping ground. So this can't be the fairy. Okay. Well, now, now I'm regretting everything. Uh, by playing around removal last turn, like obviously, like I, I should have done stuff differently here. Um, so now we are in a little bit of an awkward spot. It's fine. Also, did I just like miss killing the fairy? I think I was just focused on okay, how do I, you know, undo this, and I forgot to just kill the fairy, which is not gonna be doing anything else. So that was suboptimal to say the least. Recent reef. Okay, so now we know what we're up against. Those were some bad plays, though. Those were some very, like, a couple of, like, back to back, really, really poor plays. Here's. And I think we're just gonna go for Boseju Growth Chamber. It's Boseju. I kind of feel like my next turn is gonna involve Pack Team 4 Cultivator Colossus, regardless. Plus with the Fairy. Fetch. This is gonna be Omnath O'Clock. Looks like it. Okay, if they don't, if they do find a fetch land, they don't find fetch land. Just concede. Wow, unexpected to say the least. So they didn't have, um, they didn't have um, Kahira. So they are one hundred percent playing, uh, playing uh, Elish Norn. So Dismember and Beast Within are coming in. So we can cut a couple of Gracers. I can cut one Amulet of Vigor. Um, I suspect that there's not gonna be. I suspect that there's not gonna be um, counter magic on my opponent's side, so I could see cutting cavernous souls. I guess I'm just. I'm, I'm just gonna keep a couple. Let's cut a couple of sagas and another gracer. Asusa. Yeah, this hand just sucks. Missing too many lands. I guess it's got stuff that's exciting, but it's it just missing way too many lands. This hand's good though. Uh, I guess it's not good, but it's it's just fine. Like it, it does it does something functional. Um, I think I'm just gonna bottom the Asusa here. I don't think Asusa is what the this game's gonna be about. Rogin Trium. Do I want to? I think I want to lead on Sun Home, and I'm gonna play Saga on two. I guess it's bad against the Fairy. Ren. Ren's good. Turn two Ren is very strong. Getting back the fetch land. Uh, yeah, let's play with Seiju, send it back. We're gonna play Saga into Dryad. If my opponent goes for Recent Reef here, we get to dismember it, which is pretty nice. Oh, tap land, all right. We could have Boseiju there to prevent my opponent from drawing land, which is kind of interesting. But I think that um, just holding Boseiju for Leyline Binding is just... Okay, a little bit, a little bit dismember flooded over here, but it's fine. Here's a Dryad. Play growth chain on Sage, you say go. No force is good. No force is good. So we're gonna be prismatic ending. Okay. We're gonna get some some construct action going. It's a way to, to start pressuring this run and six. It's not incredible, but it's honest work. Yeah, our hand did it just became too clunky. Like all, all of our all of all of our draws were just absolute clunkers, so kinda of paying the price. Elish Norn. Yeah, packed it. Okay, this is a dude, and we are stuck paying for packed. So I wonder if I should have like just held up double this member instead of packed in. It just seemed like I don't have the primeval titan just yet, and it just seems like a good spot to to get the packed out of my hand. I don't know. It's it's close. It's definitely close. Yeah, I don't know. I could I could honestly see an argument for 
for just letting Norn resolve and just double dismembering. Maybe that's the better line. And I got Expedition Map there because Expedition Map finds me from Evil Titan. Yep. And now I'm tapped out, so I can... Not my Expedition Map. Pinging my... Hey, look at that. Transmute. Or Summoner's Pact. Use the mana to dismember. <clears throat> I'm gonna gain four. Respect it. Value. Play a land. Say go. So now Norn would be a problem. Now Willish Norn would be a dress down also a problem. It's not a bad draw though. Not a terrible draw. Prime time. Hey, that resolved. Okay, so T West and I guess we're just gonna get another sanctuary. Just more blue sources. Mm, let's actually get Bodos Garrison. I already have the I already have this in in play. Sorry. Well, I guess I want to play out the Boseju actually. Just hard cast solitude. Yeah, I want to play it out because my opponent may have Omnev, so that's worth playing out. There's still going to be two turns before I Cultivator, so it's going to be a while. Okay, so my opponent's got Flooded Strand, Misty, and... I mean, those are that I know. Uh, I'm going to take the one, two, one, two, pay for Pact. I do get to Transmute here. Amulet is not very good, but it's fine. Transmute and pass the turn. I think I'd rather just hold on to the amulet to play around prismatic ending. I may have to dismember this solitude. One of pluses ran up to seven. So we may have to have a long turn this time around. Let's see what we can put together. Let's see what we can put together. <laughs> Terrible draw. Heinous draw. Absolutely embarrassing draw. So bad. Act binding in response. Take my amulet for prime time. Uh, I mean, I can bossage you this. Um, I think the right way to do this is prime time trigger stack bossage ley line binding. Once I know that this is not getting dressed down, that's when we do this. Force a bigger. Okay. So. We definitely want um, Slayer Stronghold such a bad. Um, let's get Sanctuary and we already used both T Wests. Bounce that, play that, say go. Let's see if they have another Solitude. Another Solitude is kind of annoying for us. Looks like they do. Yeah, yeah, we we'll actually have to probably dismember. <clears throat> so we can still. Pay for Pact and Cast Cultivator, so would love to find another land this coming turn. Huh, opponent not plusing. Interesting. Opponent plus is right instead of minus in there. A little bit in the risque side of things. So, Pay for Pact, Tracker. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I guess if I go for, if I go for Tracker, there's the potential that I get to pressure this Ren. I'm gonna go for that. They may just have another solid. They have another solid or solitude. Leyline bind. Okay. Sure. So I'm just gonna draw a card. Because my opponent is gonna have infinite force. Prismatic ending. I guess like ultimate is not even that good now that it's that's an omnaf. That one is good. It's gonna give them a lot of mana. The thing is I don't know how many relevant cards they just they have left. Okay, so they did get the emblem. They can't really do anything with the emblem though. Like I just don't have artifacts and enchantments anymore. Forced, just a casual 28, no big deal. Amulet, okay. How much mana do we have? We have 13 mana, so we can go play Colossus, have six mana floating, trigger on the stack, Boseju Leyline Bind. I think it's actually better to Boseju first. So Boseju first. Because we're going to be able to play a land and bounce the same land. Potentially drawing another card. Also, they failed to find. So that happens now. And there's no real pressure to actually clock the Ren anymore because they already have, um, they already have the Emblem. So, prime time. Okay. All right, so let's do that instead. 
Um, yeah, let's do that instead. Gonna play prime time, leaving red and white floating. Dress down, Poseidon you my land. Okay, that's actually a reason to, to kill the Ren. Bosage is really strong. Bosage is very strong. We do get some tracker stuff. Some tracker shenanigans going, but but Bosage is obviously very strong. Um, let's get Valakut, and I'm just going to get Vesuva. Copy in Sun Home. It's two triggers. We already played my land. Opponent can force here if they want to, if they want to discard the land. Uh, I guess I'm not attacking with tracker even though I activated it so I guess that was bad I should have just used the mana to crack clue I thought I was gonna activate but I, I don't think I want to trade with the solitude here I mean that's the land that's gone which is good they plus Ren it doesn't look so apparently they don't have any more fetchables so that means that's good for me if they prismatic ending my tracker and my clue probably yeah down to three cards in hand that's not very many cards that is most definitely not very many cards. And this is very many mana. Oh, I should actually play the amulet first. I think it's likely my opponent just does something about it. So uh, let's go after Ren. Really? After triggers? Okay. Say yes. We're going to get a couple of bounce lands. Just so I can bounce them back to hand. So I can get them from Cultivator. I imagine Ren's just gonna take it. I mean, opponent's down to two cards in hand. Ren is now gone, so no more recurring Boseju. Play out Amulet. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Here's a Cultivator. It's a big boy. It's a big, big boy. If they just flash back, yeah, this is this is great for me. So they're they're down to one card, and now this Cultivator is gonna be double striking next turn. We get to draw some serious amount of cards. Perfect. And now we kind of have all of our bases covered. So I think we are kind of good here. Bounce that. Bounce that. Bounce that. Bounce that. This is Dryad. I think I'm just going to overextend. I don't think my opponent's got, is, got has any sweepers going on in their deck. Mono is starting to ask for mercy. <laughs> all right, opponent has it enough. We have gotten there. Okay, wrapping this bad boy up. Um, this was a this was an interesting league. Uh, we did see, you know, a couple of um, tier one decks, and uh, we fought we fought the good fight. We definitely got a little bit lucky versus Cam over there. Obviously, that matchup is miserable. So as long as that deck remains top tier of the format, as I was saying earlier, I don't think Amulet can really be the best deck. Uh, but uh, it still remains very very strong, right? And we we did really see. A bunch of um, we did see what the deck is really capable of. Uh, this list seems very clean to me. It seems very straightforward. It feels like it covers, if not all the bases, it covers all the bases that it can cover. Uh, so I really like this as a level zero deck list. Uh, from there, obviously, you know, meta game dependent. You can you know cut your swan songs and you can play more forces. You can play more trackers, more agility explosives. Like you know you can kind of mess around with that, but this is a very, very solid, it's just a rock solid uh, starting point for a deck list. Uh, so the only things that I would consider is potentially cutting a land to make room for another explorer. As I was doing in the past, I was actually a big fan of that. But uh, besides that, this is uh, probably the deck list that I'm going to be writing the cyber guide for. So stay tuned for that. And uh, thank you for watching. If you enjoy the content, make sure you uh, hit that like and subscribe button. And if you'd like to support what I do, uh, the different options that you have access to are uh, whenever you use TCG Player or Manage Traders, whenever you use their services, you can support the stream for free at no extra cost to you by using the links in the description of the video down below. And of course, you will find there a 10% discount for your first two months uh, if you're new to Mana Traders. And if you would like to support my content directly, you can do so through Patreon. You can do so through direct donations with any donation of $30 or more. I will play any deck list of your choice through a league and finally uh, coaching is a service that i offer as well so if you're interested in that uh, send me a message and we'll figure it out thank you so much for watching folks take care and i'll see you in the next video bye bye